recently learned that Wheel of Time season two is about to begin. And frankly, I had totally forgotten about Wheel of Time. And I realized that if I'm gonna be watching season two, which of course I'm gonna watch season two, then I need to rewatch season one because I don't remember anything. But I don't want everyone to have to rewatch season one, as amazing as it was. We all have things to do. So I took it upon myself to rewatch all of season one so that I can recap it all for you so that you don't have to watch it before season two airs. So we're gonna go through every episode and cover what happens in each one so that we're all caught up in time for season two. Episode one, leave taking. We open very dramatically with not Galadriel telling us about the bad times before and the bad guy who did the bad times, which we have to prevent returning because bad guy 2.0 is definitely somewhere. We don't get to see any of that. It's much more important for us, for the plot, uh, to see her getting dressed. Then some other girl boss urgently pursues some dude, catches him, and then takes her sweet time dramatically walking over to him to tell him that he's a yucky boy who's getting his cooties all over their girl power. Not Galadriel was lurking nearby and she hears this dude scream. And based on the scream, she determines him not to be the 2.0 that's so important? How does she know, you might be asking? And her companion does ask. And uh, yeah, well, okay then. We then cut to the multicultural summit of hippie women who are braiding each other's hair by the water, peaceful and supportive, and they push New Girl off the cliff. Dang, I didn't know hippies were into hazing. So New Girl then washes up on shore after that ordeal. And first things first, she checks to make sure that her new hairdo is still intact. She needs to sort out her priorities. We then cut to Hollister and his pops giving us some conveniently expository dialogue. Hollister then overreacts to the sound of a very distant howl, but then he immediately drops his bow on the ground because he urgently needs to move one, two, three, four rocks, which he tosses easily, almost like they were props. Then Hollister's friends, I think their names were Mary Dude and Gambler, they kindly remind us of what Hollister's dad just told us, that he's into Cliff Diver Girl. You know, the one that was making sure her hair was, was okay. And she conveniently enters the tavern to huge applause. And because she's like gone through the hazing, she now gets to join the mean girls at the mean girl table because because she's one of them now. Then a cowboy enters the salute, wait, no. I think it's, is it Strider? Sorry, pal, this isn't the prancing. Oh, I think that was that guy that was simping after not Galadriel, but, but then where's, oh, okay. So she couldn't come in until he'd announced her, but I'm not sure how she heard him murmur her name when she was standing outside in the rain and he was saying it super quietly facing away from her. I guess one of her superpowers is super hearing. And our bright boy Hollister confirms this because he notices this too. And so when Mary dude starts like talking some shit about not Galadriel, Hollister is like, shush dude, she's probably got super hearing. But then he proceeds to talk about her himself, about how her powers by themselves could turn the tide of battle. I wonder if that will become important later. Anyway, so then the head mean girl, she comes over and is like, yo, Mary dude, where's your wife? Tell me she's not blacksmithing alone. He takes the hint and goes home to his wife, the blacksmith, who's still hard at work. I'm just wondering, earlier that day, were they both working in the forge? And then was he like, be back in a sec, and then just went to the pub and never came back? Anyway, so he comes back in and is all like, why are you working instead of drinking your ma- Excuse me? Wait, I just- hey, what, what? What kind of- what? um Just what? Hey, wanna say what? something- Okay. Hey, I've been trying to keep quiet, but uh, first of all, Mary Dude's name is actually Perrin. I'm not calling him that. Mary Dude actually can't be called Mary Dude because in the books, he doesn't have a wife. And I need you to remember this. I, I feel like this is a vital piece of information for you to remember for later, this episode. So maybe you could call him like, not married dude instead. Anyway, Gambler, meanwhile, has to go home because his dad is cheating and mom is drunk, so 
Yeesh. Meanwhile, back at the tavern, the parents of Hollister and Cliff Girl are like, why don't y'all do the dishes? Which is apparently village code for doing the nasty. Here we get the reveal that both Hollister and Cliff Girl have memory problems because he tells her that his dad just told him that he used to pick berries for her when he and she were kids, um, which is apparently news to him and is also apparently news to her. Her? In light of this found memory, um, he tries to give her uh, pocket berries. <laughs> She's like, lol, gross. Then we cut to not Galadriel and her simp who are taking a bath together. And here we learn the very important information that her magic can make the water warmer. Very important. Then we cut back again to Hollister and Cliff Girl who are in the middle of the empty tavern, um, naked? Damn. But Cliff Girl then drops the bombshell that the head mean girl wants Cliff Girl to become apprentice head mean girl, which obviously means that she can't have a boyfriend. And Hollister is like, are you for real right now? Are you gonna play me like that? I mean, they just did the nasty. But then we cut to Voldemort riding into the village. Oh my God, they're in danger. Oh, just kidding. We cut immediately to broad daylight then and some dude whistling. So I don't know what that was about. Uh, Mary dude and his wife are together, which is very important to stay on top of that situation. Gambler goes over to this newcomer, this whistling dude, and he tries to sell him a gold bracelet that he stole the night before. Forgot to mention that gasp. But the whistler dude is like, um, will I be able to sell this bracelet here in town? Whistler, my dude, you're a traveling tradesman. You go from town to town selling things as you find them, right? So like, why would you want to buy something in this town only if you could immediately sell it in this same town? Am I missing something? Then we cut back to not Galadriel and her simp who have a classically one-sided conversation. So you didn't sleep? You think Voldemort is already here? Guess we better get to work. Then we cut to Cliff Girl who goes to find Hollister who's being sad on his thinking rock. He tells her that when he's up there, he likes to think about his life super deep. Cliff Girl gets emotional because she's chosen the mean girl life and Hollister is like, yeah, I figured. Meanwhile, not Galadriel decides to go and out mean girl, the head mean girl. They call you a leader, but you're cleaning sad. You're not from around here, are you? The lady that raised me tried joining your club, but your peeps thought she was smelly and her accent was poor. Wait, her accent? Was it different from everyone else we've heard in this town so far? Cause like, y'all don't sound any different from not Galadriel. Well, you see my initial rudeness was a clever ruse to trick you into thinking that I don't like you, but actually, unlike this townspeople who haven't seemed to have had a problem with her at all, I think you're swell. Well, I still don't like you, so there. Okay, okay, I just have to say that this scene would make a lot more sense in the book, and that's because it's not in the book, because this scene makes absolutely no sense. The White Tower is actually like desperate for women and would never turn someone away, and in some cases kind of like forces women to go to the White Tower to train. Are you gonna keep doing this? No, no, that that was the last one. Anyway, cut to Mean Girl and Cliff Girl standing on the wee bridge, listening to the wind. Do you hear that? Um, the wind? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it sounds, um, wrong? Do, uh, does, does that mean something? I've never heard anything like it. You've never heard strong wind? Then Simp finds some super sus dead animals in the woods. Then we cut to Mary, Dude, and Hollister who are giving Gambler some money. Very important plot development, presumably. Then we cut back to Hollister at home with his dad and he's like, hey, wouldn't it be nice to celebrate Tangled Day with the rest of the town? But the dad is like, nah, why bother? We can light a candle by ourselves just as easy. And then Hollister is like, hey, we haven't mentioned the title of this show yet. So could you tell me about the Wheel of Time? And the dad is like, oh dang, you're right, yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> the Wheel of Time turns and ages come and pass, leaving memories that turn into legend. Legend fades to myth. And even myth is long forgotten when the age that gave birth to I think we get the idea. 
Anyway, we cut now to the village dancing. Meanwhile, the simp goes over to knock Galadriel and is like, hey, bad guys are here. We gotta bounce. Do you know who 2.0 is yet? Uh, not Galadriel does not know. And I, I kind of would just like to say that it might have been a good idea to like spend your time in the village, I don't know, talking to people, um, maybe trying to figure out which ones are the ones you're interested in instead of just dramatically staring off into the middle distance, but you know. What do I know? But not Gladriel and Simp spend way too long thinking about it because bad dudes start attacking everybody. And Mean Girl and Cliff Girl team up to, to help one old dude who immediately dies. Pause for sadness while everyone else is still in danger. Hollister and his pops in their house away from the village also get attacked. But Pops has got some moves, which is surprising. But that doesn't save Pops from a pretty bad hit, which I think upsets Hollister, but it's kind of hard to tell. His face doesn't really change. Then finally, after basically the whole village has been slaughtered, Not Galadriel decides to finally do her Colors of the Wind interpretive dance, which doesn't do much. Everybody is still getting attacked. Didn't Hollister say earlier that her people, like just one of them could turn the tide of an entire battle? Lol, guess not. Then a gambler he finds where his little sisters are safely hiding and he pulls them out of their hiding place and is like, okay, here's the plan, we hide. Then married dude and married dude's wife get attacked and married dude totally owns the creature and then kills his wife. Whoops, <laughs> RIP. RIP, I guess. This woman doesn't exist. She doesn't exist. Anyway, everybody else is still dying and Nakaladriel is still dancing. And then Nakaladriel gets hit and the baddies all pause to cheer. But getting hit is apparently what like unlocks her mojo because she suddenly starts to take the situation real seriously. She gathers enough mojo to do some serious damage to the town. So what she does is she destroys the infrastructure of the town in order to hit the baddies with rocks until the buildings collapse. Then the next morning, Hollister shows up with his injured dad and is like, hey, girlfriend, forget everybody else that you're healing. My dad needs healing. And she's like, duh, of course, literally no one else matters. And then even not Galadriel comes over to help Hollister's dad. And she like takes a look at his wound and is like, mm, that's bad guy poison. And she immediately like gets to work with her mojo, like magic healing him. So I guess all the other villagers that got attacked somehow didn't get bad guy poison in their wounds. So anyway, not Galadriel magic heals Hollister's pops, to which Hollister's reaction you might think would be gratitude. Might be, wow, gee, thanks. Don't know what I would have done without you, but you'd be wrong. Unlike you and me, Hollister isn't taken in by her seeming niceness. His reaction to her healing his dad from near certain death is, yo lady, um, you came here and then all these baddies showed up. I think that's pretty sus. But then not Galadriel is like, um, joke's on you. These baddies all showed up because of you and your friends who have all conveniently gathered for me to point at. So Cassie, um, a magic lady saw the wheel turning and then the, that meant that the actual bad guy is back. So we need bad guy 2.0 who is for sure Z is one of the kids in the town to defeat the, the for real bad guy, I think. I think that's right. Not Gladriel's real pissed at these kids from this village. She's like, you've spent way too long in this village pretending like what happens in the rest of the world doesn't affect you. I mean, they were born in this village and then just still live in that village. Is that not okay? She's like, we leave now. And I, I feel like she could have prepped them for that moment by like talking to them when she got to the village, but whatever. End of the episode. On to episode two, Shadows Waiting. So we open with the fantasy KKK, where the chief dude is eating weird food while a lady who's apparently being burned at the stake is calmly watching him. As the flames reach her waist, she does finally start to complain a little bit. And we cut to our brave heroes as they are trotting along until Simp gallops up to them and everyone stops and he says nothing. And then knock Ladriel is like, how much time? Not enough. We need to move faster. Everyone then finally starts to get a move on. I really feel like Simp could have just rode up to them and immediately been like, hey, no time, let's go. Instead of like waiting to be asked, but I don't know. 
The hobbits make it safely to the ferry, which will take them across the water, which the ringwraiths fear. Wait, no, wrong story. So it seems like they're going to make it safely across the water, but then Voldemort rides forth and nothing happens and they still cross. But then the fairy man wants to go back, but not Galadriel is like, nope, and sinks his fairy. But like a good captain, the fairy man decides to go down with his ship. Actually, well, I, I don't want to nitpick, but- But you're gonna nitpick. Like the scene gives a very different vibe of Moraine in the book. Who? Not Galadriel. Anyway, the scene makes way more sense. It's much more subtle in the book. Like. First of all, the fairy dudes are totally sketch and you think that they're gonna do bad things anyway. And then when they get to the other side, the a whirlpool appears and the fairy just kind of sinks into it. And Moraine's standing there like, weird, whirlpools kind of happen sometimes. Isn't that funny? And no one really knows it's her. And no one jumps in the river and dies going after it. They're not Anyway, idiots. our heroes make camp and then Gambler conveniently brings up Mean Girl, saying if she was here, she'd be arguing with the not Galadriel this whole time. But this is super triggering for Cliff Girl, because she saw Mean Girl get dragged off by one of the beasties. Then not married dude, are you happy now? I guess. Is like, nah, dying a super violent death is totally peaceful and you shouldn't worry about it. <laughs> okay, pal. You go on telling yourself that. Hollister wants to make a plan or something. But Cliff Girl's like, what if she's right about us? And I would just like to point out that it is a little bit late in the game to be wondering if you should have rode off with her. Cause like, cause, cause you did ride off with her. So like, what are you gonna do? Ride back alone? Like, okay, but so then everyone goes to sleep. Cause I guess we didn't decide to ride off alone. So yay, quest continues. They all go to sleep. Um, but then not Galadriel decides to creep on Cliff Girl, who's like, so are you gonna kill us all like you killed Fairy Man? Not Galadriel is like, girl, he killed himself. And Cliff Girl's like, well, yeah, fair point. Not Galadriel wants to know what Cliff Girl's townspeople call this like weather forecasting power. And Cliff Girl says, we listen to the wind. It's a great name for it. Then not Galadriel gets out a necklace and tells Cliff Girl in the dead of night, in darkness, to look closely at the stone. Couldn't they do this in the morning? Look at the stone. You're starting to feel very sleepy. Then Cliff Girl goes and finds Hollister and lies down next to him. Mm -hmm. But he's like, um, I came over here to be alone, which is a great idea when you're sleeping in the woods, fleeing deadly beasties on a quest. Definitely go off by yourself. Can't see that going wrong. Cliff Girl takes the hint and moves on and Hollister goes back to sleep. I'm certain this was a vital scene. Cut to not married dude who's also not sleeping. Is anyone freaking sleeping? Anyway, he's decided to check on his injured leg, which only hurts him when he's looking at it. Since Cliff Girl can't have Hollister, she's decided to settle now for the available not married dude. They have a very important conversation. Do you think we'll ever go back? No. We then cut to Hollister, who can't sleep after all, probably because he's coughing up bats. Hate when that happens. Oh, just kidding, it was a dream? Or was it? Hollister immediately knows who to blame. Did you do this? Not Gladriel doesn't even bother to reply. <laughs> but Not Gladriel does want to know what all of them saw in their dreams and is super mad that they didn't tell her much sooner. I mean, they just woke up, so I feel like that is immediately, but dreams have power more than you know. Uh, okay, how about you tell us then? Time to go. Where are we going? Why should we trust you? I don't want to go to the White Tower and turn into a simp. Okay, go home. Uh, as if you'd let me. Uh, I degaff. Okay, so it is really late for Hollister to be questioning her. Like, as I said before, like, okay, you went on the quest already? Like, dude, it's too late. You've committed. But also, isn't like figuring out which one of them is the 2.0, isn't that like super important? Isn't that like all like not Galadriel's like whole deal and is like important for like the world? So if you just like let him go and you're like, you don't care if he leaves, like isn't that like a like a big problem for your quest? But okay, sure. The brat wants answers. You won't give him answers so he can fuck off. Anyway, Cliff Girl is not amused by Hollister and Hollister reacts very maturely to this. Do you think she's any better than what's chasing us? Says the dude whose dad almost got mauled by a beastie and only survived because she healed him. 
Those monsters killed Not Mary Dude's wife. Um, yeah, that's definitely what happened. If I were her, I would leave you behind too. You already did. Anyway, Gambler talks Hollister down. They finally start saddling their horses, even though Not Galadriel rode off like ages ago. Presumably she's just gonna have to wait for them to catch up. So she could have spent that time just answering their questions, but nah. Riding off only to have to sit there and wait for them to catch up is definitely much better use of her time. But then they run into the fantasy KKK. Dun dun dun. Simp gets very territorial when the bad dude gets real handsy with Not Galadriel and very wisely antagonizes him. The KKK guy checks out her wound and is like, we hate the magic ladies, but only they can heal you. So go find one of those. And Not Galadriel's like, yep, will do. And then the KKK rides off sinisterly. I mean, that's it? That's all you're gonna say about this stupid scene? I mean, it's been established that they are burning Aes Sedai. Burning what? The magic ladies. Lyanna, come on, keep up. They're burning these at the stake. And then all of a sudden we have this character who's like, but if you wanna get healing, you should go seek out the people we hate. Like sure, that character in the book's a little less zealous than the others, but this still doesn't make sense. Say more. Grr, that's so stupid. Ah, uh, it makes no sense. Ah, we hate it. Better? I do feel better. Thank you. Cliff Girl is like, hey, you lied. I thought you guys couldn't do that. Huh, gotcha. And Not Galadriel's like, what I said was the truth from a certain point of view. And then Gambler randomly starts singing. And then everyone starts singing and then not galadriel is like ah this song conveniently provides an excellent opportunity for exposition story time lady they have asked you so many questions and you won't answer any of them but now we're gonna get a history lesson about an old song that the villagers happen to start singing great then we have to pause for a cliff top photo shoot everyone pick a good spot no two should have the same pose okay nailed it then we spend some time with hollister and cliff top who are sharing their feels much sad very angst but not married dude's leg is getting much worse so bad in fact that a whole pack of wolves is attracted to the smell of it rut row but not married dude doesn't do anything the wolf like licks his leg a bit and then runs off not married dude is like huh that was weird they camp for the night, but then actual, uh-oh, Voldy found them. Very courteous of him to screech so that they would know that he was near. Nakaladril is not doing too good, so they gotta take turns carrying her. So they're, they're riding, 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 and then they hit a wall with a big crack in it, and the horses stop. They will not move forward. And then the beasties stop and won't move forward. And the simp is like, they won't follow us inside, which is, I guess, what the horses needed to hear because after he says that, their horses have no problem moving forward. Smart horses. They make their way into this ruined city that is totally deserted. And suddenly Not Mary Dude is feeling quite talkative, helpfully pointing out that there's no birds, no bugs. Wonderful. Just what we needed. Luckily, this abandoned city provides an excellent opportunity for Simp to pick up where Not Galadriel left off on the whole exposition history lesson. Because you guessed it, this city is a big part of the story from that song. The TLDR is that the people in this city didn't answer when Gondor called for aid, so evilness killed them. They are told that the city is dangerous, that they should touch nothing, and to only eat the food that they brought. So naturally Hollister wanders off so that he and Cliff Girl can have a nice photo op on the rooftop. Then Gambler wanders off and touches a bunch of stuff. He finds this super sus looking dagger that makes the horses freak out. One of the horses literally turns into dust in front of them and our heroes don't really react to that. I mean, like they seem worried, but if a horse turned to dust in front of me, I think I would be more than worried. Not Galadriel finally wakes up and is like, where are we? Everyone splits up, of course, as they are chased by shadows. Then Cliff Girl finally utilizes those awesome cliff diving skills that she picked up from her hazing as she and Not Married Dude dive from what looks like a thousand feet up into an extremely shallow bit of water, but they're fine, don't worry about it. Simp gets Not Galadriel out of the city and then is immediately ambushed by, <gasps> Mean Girl is alive? Just wanna say you'd know this if you read the book because she doesn't pretend die in the book. 
Episode 3, A Place of Safety. We open with a flashback. Mean Girl is getting dragged off by a beastie. Everyone else is getting mauled on the spot, but I guess her beastie prefers to eat in private, which, you know, fair enough. But he wanders off from her to an apparently injured beastie. Aw, he's worried about his fr Oh, oh. He starts mauling his friend. Okay, so Mean Girl is just lying there, defenseless, but beastie is mauling another beastie, which would seem to suggest that the beastie prefers to maul another beastie to mauling humans. Mean Girl runs away while beastie is feasting, which upsets beastie. Dude, you had the chance to maul her and didn't. This is on you. Mean Girl hides from the beastie in water. I hope she was aware that they're afraid of water, because otherwise that seems like a very dumb thing to do. But then Beastie gets in the water, no problem. So I'm not sure how getting in the water helped her, but she somehow overpowers him, so yay! And if I hadn't known from the previous episode that she's definitely alive, I bet that scene would have been really tense. Okay, but so back to the present. Mean Girl demands to know why not Galadriel left the heroes, and Simp is like, um, she is unconscious. Mean Girl immediately tries to kill Simp, but Simp seems into it. And we cut to Hollister and Gambler in a field of rocks where Hollister is just standing and shouting the names of their friends. Gambler's like, bruh, that is not helping. You need to cut that out. Gambler wants to go home, but suddenly Hollister is all about not Galadriel's plan to go to the girl power headquarters because Cliff Girl wanted to go there and he wants to be with Cliff Girl, so. You know. Speaking of Cliff Girl, she and Not Mary Dude are trekking across the barren land, possibly pursued by wolves. Not Mary Dude tries to build a fire, I think to keep the wolves away. Uh, he sucks at it though, so Cliff Girl uses the mojo that she learned from Not Galadriel to get it started. And Cliff Girl wants to go back for Hollister, but Not Mary Dude is like, hey, don't worry about Hollister, he'll find us. Snuggle up with me instead. Meanwhile, it's the next morning and Simp has tied Mean Girl to a tree. Simp is like, are you ready to heal, not Galadriel? And Mean Girl's like, if I help her, she better answer my questions. Are you really in a position to be making demands? It's not a demand, it's a threat. Okay, so first of all, demand, threat, what's the difference? Second, I mean, yeah, she has leverage which is what one needs in order to make demands for threats. But third, Simp can't actually guarantee that not Galadriel will answer Mean Girl's questions. So like he can promise she'll do the Highland Reel and not Galadriel is not bound to anything that he promised on her behalf. So like, what are we even talking about? But I guess they come to an arrangement because Mean Girl then goes about taking her sweet time collecting some special flowers and pauses dramatically because Simp is watching her collect said flowers. I thought the situation with Not Galadriel was like urgent, but you know, by all means don't rush. Mean Girl carefully trims some bark from a tree that looks like all the other trees. I know you wanna ask, so ask. And then Simp asks. I didn't say I'd answer though. <laughs> mean Girl's like crushing the stuff that she collected, ready to like put it on the wound. But then she suddenly pauses because she's suddenly worried that Simp will feel the pain when she starts putting it on the wound because of the bond that simps share with their ladies. I really don't know if she's the one to be delivering this little bit of exposition because I do not buy that she gives a single shit about him feeling the pain. Okay, so then we cut back to not marry dude who's having a nightmare about that wife that he killed. <laughs> Whoops. Um, but she's getting eaten by his wolf pals in his dream. Then he wakes up to find those same wolves are pursuing them, but they easily outrun them. And then when the wolves catch up to them, they politely wait so that our heroes can run away again. Meanwhile, Hollister and Gambler are trekking along. Gambler's like, dude, I'm freezing. Can I wear your coat for a bit? Someday people will tell stories about us, which is not relevant, but okay, asshole. They come upon a town that has a body in a cage hanging outside of it and they're like, damn, that's rough. These guys are really unflappable. And first the horse turns to dust, now bodies in cages just all in a day for them, I guess. And of course they head straight for the pub. Get hype because the Glee Man is about to do another song. Oh wow, okay, that was way overhyped. This guy, um, sucks. Is he trying to do a Batman impression? Is there really no one in town that can do better? Okay, well, no one clapped, but they are handing him money. The Glee Man is like, 
well, if you think you can do better, sir, you are way too overconfident for someone who just growled their way through what I think was supposed to be a melody. And then he robs Gambler. What a guy, yeah. truly a treasure. He actually is a treasure in the books. He's like actually exciting and he wears colorful clothes and sings happy songs and tells cool stories and juggles and does tricks. And he's protective over the boys and wants to help them because he thinks they're not. Meanwhile, the wolves are still keeping a respectful distance from Not Mary Dude and Cliff Girl. They stumble on some tracks and Cliff Girl is like, the wolves led us here, which is definitely the conclusion that anyone would draw from these circumstances. Meanwhile, Gambler and Hollister are now without money, so they have to work for their supper. Only Gambler is not into it. Hollister is surprised that Gambler has such a poor attitude about this because that's so different from how he's been acting this entire time. Hmm, yeah, it's almost like the show didn't understand character development and just made Matt. Who? <sighs> Gambler, which, okay, in fairness of all of your names, this is weirdly okay, when you consider the rest of the books. But anyway, Gambler, he, they made him a thief from the beginning instead of showing him just to be kind of like a stupid teenage boy who played practical jokes. They made him too dark. So now you don't see any difference and there's no development. Anyway, Gambler decides to drop some truth, like how their friends are probably all dead. And if they're not, who cares? Hollister's girl doesn't even want him. Unclear if Hollister is upset by this. Barkeep, who says she's overworked, trusts Gambler to serve and collect money from patrons of the tavern and then spend time chatting with him. Barkeep was born and raised and is predicting she will die in the same town that she's bartending in, but for some reason, her accent is different from every other person in the town, which is a neat trick. Meanwhile, Mean Girl's cure for Nakaladriel seems to be doing jack squat for her. So Simp rides off urgently to somewhere. Meanwhile, Not Married Dude and Cliff are having a heart to heart. He's being protective. And for some reason, Cliff conveniently chooses to say, it's not your fault what happened. I mean, I'm not sure why she would think that he thought that it was. He says that it is. She says that it's not. Fantastic dialogue, 10 out of 10. And they keep going until they run into some very wacky looking folks. And then they like teach them some dialogue to say back at them, something about a song, clubhouse password type stuff. And since they say the lines without having any idea what they mean, they get welcomed into the group. Great system, no notes. Meanwhile, Hollister has split a whole mess of wood without breaking a sweat. Just very impressive. Barkeep gives them a room and drink and flirts. She has really changed her tune. Meanwhile, Simp gazes out at the land from a vista point, very urgently. Nakaladrill's not doing great, but Simp says he's found what they are looking for. Whatever that is. Meanwhile, Gambler has decided to rob a corpse, but is caught by Batman. You see, this corpse is here for exposition. Dead guy in the cage has red hair. And apparently that means he's from a special place where dangerous folks come from. So this town killed him out of fear. Why Batman cares? Unclear. Anyway, Hollister is at that same time flirting with Barkeep, having a deep conversation about sightseeing and free will. But then Barkeep reveals that she's evil, but she needs Gambler too, who is busy burying the body from the cage with Batman. Barkeep has Hollister good and trapped, and she tells us that the door of the room they're in is made of super duper strong stuff, that even three men together couldn't break it down. But then the red-haired Hollister breaks it down. They run away, but then she corners them in the middle of the town by herself. They are two against her, but okay. They all pause so that she can tell them about her dreams and her big plan to deliver them to the uber for realsies baddie, but then Batman saves them. Meanwhile, Simp and Mean Girl bring Nakaladriel to the girl bosses who show off the dude that they captured in the beginning, in the in the first episode, remember that guy? Um, who stares at them evilly. Episode four, The Dragon Reborn. We get a zero context battle opener. The evilly staring dude, who's possibly the 2.0 from the previous episode, is ominously smiling and using his mojo. And then some dude says that he sent word to the girl bosses and they're gonna come for this guy. But this possible 2.0 seems 
pretty schizo. But then instead of killing this dude that is told on him, he heals him. Anyway, back to the present. Sim and Co. are with the girl bosses, where Not Galadriel is getting patched up. The girl bosses brief Not Galadriel on the situation with this possible 2.0. They seem miffed that they can't just kill the guy or strip him of his mojo or whatever it is they want to do to him because they have to give him due process per the head girl boss. Simp then finds a fellow simp to train with while their girl bosses wrap up their business. This new simp and his lady are worried that this other girl boss, the red one, is gonna kill the guy or whatever. Why this is worrisome when he seems like a clear and present danger is unclear. Meanwhile, Cliff and Not Merry Dude are still with the Rainbow Caravan, moving along. Meanwhile, Hollister and Gambler are traveling with Batman. Hollister and Gambler very inconspicuously stop their horses to talk about Batman. And after apparently hours, they decide to finally talk about the lady that attacked them in the village. Um, and she said that there were five possible people who could be the 2.0. Who is the fit? Meanwhile, Not Galadriel is gossiping in a conveniently expository way with one of the other girl bosses. And during this expository dialogue, we learn that the different colors of their outfits mean things. Hey, oh, here we go. Hey again, look, I've been wanting to discuss this for a while. Yeah, I'm so glad you brought this up because the Aes Sedai do have rings, but they don't have the color of their Aja on them. They're just a serpent eating its tail. Like, yes, they do have all different Ajas, but they don't just go around advertising that all the time. They're not out and about in color-coded outfits, please. But if they aren't color-coded, how are we supposed to know? It's hopeless. Anyway, where was I? Mean Girl Pouting on a Rock is approached by Red, and she is hostile. As usual. Meanwhile, Hollister and Gambler and Batman are ambushed by one dude, which is an excellent opportunity for Hollister to show off how smart he is. If you meant to kill us, you'd hold that arrow with your fingertips, not your fist. And if I meant to kill you, I'd have kept my mouth shut. Ah shucks, you got me. And then he immediately reveals his wife and child who are totes cool with these three strangers staying with them. Meanwhile, Red is still trying to win over Mean Girl, but Simba's jealous and cuts in. We learn vital information here that we didn't already know, such as the fact that they are heading for the headquarters of the girl bosses, the White Tower, and that their friends might be there, and that if they're not there, they can get help finding them. Meanwhile, Cliff and Wifeless are traveling with the Rainbow Caravan and are horrified to learn that they are pacifists. Their argument is, have you ever picked up a weapon? And has your life been better or worse since then? Most would probably answer that they wouldn't be freaking alive if they hadn't picked up a weapon. Luckily, they make this argument to Wifeless, who's about the only person who might find this persuasive. Oh, oh not this again. It's actually not very persuasive to Perrin in the books because he didn't have a wife to kill. Instead, he's like, LOL, you'll probably get destroyed. No thanks, Any I need an axe. Anyway. Meanwhile, Hollister and Gambler are mucking out the stables while Batman supervises. Gambler sneaks off to puke up some evilness, but he's interrupted by the kid giving him a whole ass loaf of bread. Very generous. He asks her name, but she says her mom said not to tell them because they might be dangerous. Your kid, go out there alone to bring these strangers some bread. That's definitely safe to do, but whatever you do, don't tell them your name. Batman reminisces about his nephew who went crazy in conveniently the exact same way that Gambler seems to be. Though I gotta say, Gambler hasn't been acting any different around Hollister than usual, if you ask me. Yes, exactly. Read the book. Are you done? You'll find out. As I was saying. Anyway, back to Batman's nephew who picked up a steak knife to slit his own throat. Listen, I know this is a fantasy world, so you can't really like say it's anachronistic, but steak knives were invented after World War II. So like, I don't know why we couldn't have gone with like the much less glaringly, seemingly anachronistic option, like a dagger. Meanwhile, Girl Boss Squad is still guarding this possible 2.0 while the simps drink around a fire. Mean Girl cracks a smile for the first time until she remembers they work for the girl bosses who she hates. Simp goes to find Not Galadriel. That dude is too old to be 2.0. Uber bad, he probably doesn't even know who 2.0 is either. Damn, can't believe our one job was finding those kids and then we lost them. I lost them. We lost them. 
I shouldn't have had a drink. My drinking makes you emotional. Because, you know, Simpson girl bosses are bondage. So, like, it affects you. Just, just want to remind everybody of that piece of world building. Meanwhile, the rainbow caravan is having a little whole dance party. Cliff requests some exposition. And the rainbow caravan member obliges. Something about a lost song that'll heal the world. Blah, blah, blah. Head caravan lady preaches some more pacifism at wifeless. Cliff stares absently into the middle distance. Caravan cutie is like, who is he? The man that holds your heart. I need to try that next time someone's just staring off into space. Just assume they are pining and run with it. Caravan Cutie tells us about the Rainbow Caravan Rumspringa. I'm just kind of wondering how people coming back from Rumspringa are able to find the notably traveling caravan. Meanwhile, Hollister wakes up and decides to talk to the probably sleeping gambler and tell him, I'm here. Thanks, bruh. Trying to sleep, but... Then we cut to a dream sequence. And then Hollister wakes up. Gambler is gone. It seems like he's killed the whole family, but then they discover a ring wraith. So did Gambler kill them or was it the wraith? Unclear. This made me really angry. Oh, this made you angry. It's like Matt wouldn't kill anyone, but technically in the show, his dagger doesn't have any blood on it. So I'll give them this one. It's just- So, like oh no, how are they gonna escape? But it's actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. Meanwhile, Red is getting frustrated with having to guard 2.0 instead of killing him and is proposing they orchestrate like a little a loophole situation, but the other one is not going for it. What a nerd. Simp is, um, meditating by a rock. He explains his, his cultural history to Mean Girl, who's suddenly super interested instead of hostile. Not to be outdone, Mean Girl decides to show off that she has her own cultural customs, but it turns out it's just some nonsense that she heard as a kid and she doesn't actually know what it means. You know what that means? That's right, exposition time. And wouldn't you know it, the words she was just saying are tied to that same story that they learned about from that song that they were randomly singing and the evil city that they happened upon. It's crazy how they know nothing about this story when it's apparently tied to like everything they see and do. Anyway, sharing this little bit of exposition really seems to endear him to Mean Girl, who's like, you know, you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. But then, attack! 2.0 is biding his time, I guess, because suddenly, boom, girl bosses go flying. Arrows raining down. The strategy appears to be run randomly around the forest, attacking the army one by one, whilst leaving 2.0 mostly unguarded. Oh shoot, not Galadriel sneaks in to have a one-on-one -on -one with 2.0, who doesn't immediately attack her, which is very courteous. He's like, I am for sure the 2.0, new and improved. Lol, you're not though, bro. Girl power unite, oh no. That woman that talked to not Galadriel for like a minute earlier is dead. Cue dramatic devastation slow motion cam. Look, I, I know I shouldn't be interrupting this really sad moving moment. Let me guess, this death is like super impactful in the book and we should all be crying over this tragic Oh, she's loss. not in the books. So who cares? Oh, all right. Anyway, second simp then makes the terrible decision to attack 2.0 with some axes, which 2.0 then immediately shatters and then shoots at all of the other people, including Simp Prime. But don't worry, even though everyone is bleeding out, Mean Girl shows up and mass heals everybody. I was definitely worried there. You for don't a have anything else to say over this mass display of power over someone she's been mostly hostile to? Like, Nynaeve's real. Who? Head, Mean Girl's real story is that her power broke when Egwene. Cliff, when Cliff was really young with a fever that wouldn't break and she was dying and head mean girl loved Cliff so much that she broke her power to Girl her. bosses assemble. 2.0 is a goner. Meaningful close up on mean girl. Episode five, blood calls Don't blood. Don't even get me started on this episode. Oh, you better buckle up. We're gonna have a ride from here on out. Are you done? Can we get on with the episode now? I'm done. I'm not done. So a bunch of people we didn't know and didn't care about died. Very sad. We mourn. R.I.P. Whole month passes, presumably uneventfully. A whole month? Oh boy. In this climate? 
Couldn't they at least have given us a hint that they've been struggling or running for their lives or something? Not Galadriel and co. are arriving at headquarters. Hollister and Gambler, who is looking more and more hot topic, are also arriving at headquarters. Gambler seems to think he killed the family, but Hollister is like, nah, brah, no way. Mean Girl's back to being mean and arrogant. Not Galadriel's like, aw, you scared? They're there. You're super now, just accept it. Meanwhile, Wifeless and Cliff are still traveling with the Rainbow Caravan, who are also arriving at headquarters, but then, rut row, they run into the KKK. Look, does it really make sense that the White Cloaks... The who? Okay, Liana, don't play dumb. There are men in cloaks. I think you can figure out this one. Does it really make sense that the White Cloaks are just camping outside of the White Tower, where the Aes Sedai have the center of their power and are very, like, would definitely not let them just camp outside where they are. Are you calling the girl bosses dumb? No, I'm not calling the Aes Sedai dumb. I'm calling the showrunners dumb. Anyway, the cloaks of white Is that really wearers. what you're going to call them now? Yup. I mean, technically it's closer than what you were calling them before, so carry on. They want Cliff and Wifeless. But Rainbow Caravan is like, no way, you can't have them. If you want them, you'll have to come through us. And then the pacifists peacefully link arms. And the cloaks of white wearers immediately attack them. And then capture the escaping Cliff and Wifeless. So I guess that proved the wisdom of the pacifist life, huh? Meanwhile, Hollister gets ambushed by Hagrid while he's in the bookstore. And he is bursting with exposition. This is important exposition. I'm sure it is. Look, it's still not technically done the way I'd like it to be done, but it's well, important. Well, Hollister doesn't have time for that. He's gotta get after a gambler. There's a parade to show off this 2.0 that they captured and defeated, basically to gloat. Gambler starts freaking out. Hollister helpfully agrees to kill him if he ever goes nuts. Gambler then agrees to do the same for Hollister, so. That's comforting. Meanwhile, the simps have a sad chat about simp life and losing their girl bosses. No. No? Warders are supposed to go mad when their Aes Sedai is killed. They, they're mad with revenge. They want to go and stop it at nothing until they destroy the person who destroyed their Aes Sedai. And like, Loghain's right there in the tower. He's right there. Yeesh. Meanwhile, Cliff is stripped, scrubbed, and dressed by the cloaks Could of you white stop wearers. Them that? Fine. Cliff is stripped, scrubbed, and dressed by the KKK. Happy now? No, I'm not happy. I've never been happy. What part of this makes you think that I am happy with any of this? Wifeless is bound and gagged. Cliff tells Chief Man that she can't use Mojo. He doesn't believe her and threatens Wifeless. But Cliff insists she can't use Mojo. So Chief KKK dude starts cutting Wifeless and then his eyes wolf out. Okay, so Chief's main deal is killing Mojo users. And he tells them he's not a man of his word. But he says he's gonna make him a deal. If she uses her Mojo, she dies. But Wifeless gets to live. Or if she doesn't use her mojo, then she lives and wifeless dies. So like he's obviously gonna kill them both. But sure, let's let's take this proposition completely seriously. Meanwhile, back at headquarters, Mean Girl's visited by Second Simp, a character we all deeply care about and definitely want to keep tabs on. He's looking for ye olde Ambien to go with his whiskey. Mean Girl decides to leave her room, gasp, and wander around. Red immediately finds her. Like was she like watching her door like damn that was fast we get some more lovely exposition red and apparently all reds don't have simps because they hate all men I mean, no it's because of men's connection to the source and how their one power is corrupted it gives it a very different under meanwhile Hollister, while watching over gambler is once again visited by hagrid who brings mean girl to him she checks on gambler who naturally flips out hollister shares that he thinks gambler might be the 2.0 they're looking for but they can't trust not galadriel so look rand don't you dare hollister would never think that Matt Gambler is the Dragon Reborn at this point. For reasons you're gonna find out later. I mean, it's kind of spoilery, hey, but no like... spoilers, Missy. Zip it. Anyway, naturally, Mean Girl agrees that they cannot trust not Galadriel. No need for girl bosses here. Mean Girl then suddenly switches topics and tells Hollister about when Cliff was little and girl bossed her way through a fever. 
girl did not boss babe her way through a fever. Um, I think she did. No, Nynaeve, head mean girl, helped Cliff boss her way through the fever. That's the whole point. Meanwhile, Wifeless tells Cliff about killing his wife. So obviously he should be the one to die for the KKK. But Chief Man comes back and starts cutting again and Wifeless starts wolfing out again while Cliff decides to start using her mojo to save him. Chief is delighted until her mojo sets Wifeless free and guess who joined them? His whole pack of wolf pals. Oh! So like, is this, this wolf thing confusing to you? What? Because like, by this point in the book, you would know while the wolves were there. You would know. Do you, do you, are you curious about like what's going on at all? Okay, I know I said no spoilers, but what? What is it? What don't we know? Well, I'll just leave you to it, you know. You could just, just read the book. You could just read the book. Meanwhile, Not Galadriel is cornered by Red, who's decided to tell not Galadriel that Mean Girl is a shoe in to join the red team. Why it helps her to tell not Galadriel any of this? Unclear. It's unclear because she'd never say it, so. Simp and Second Simp chat about their feelings. Not Galadriel goes to chat with a fellow girl boss. They're both super worried about Second Simp, as are we, the audience, of course. Very, very concerned about that guy. But there's trouble brewing. Red and Chief Girl Boss are bad news and they hate Not Galadriel. Everybody wants to know what Not Galadriel is up to, but she just smiles smugly. Yeah, I bet you do. Second Simp is still moping, discusses polyamory with Simp Prime. He teases Simp Prime about Mean Girl. All very important for the plot. Vital we include this. Then Dawn breaks and Simp Prime realizes that he's been drugged by Second just Simp. Just no, no. Oh boy. Lan would never get drugged. He's extremely competent at his job and he has been with Moraine for ages. He would never let his guard down like that. He'd never be even in the situation to let his guard down to be doing that. This whole scene makes zero sense. And a sense. knife is missing from the very conspicuous mantle display. Gasp. Second simp deleted himself. He wouldn't delete himself. I mean, he would die getting revenge and going down with 2.0. I mean Loghain. He's right there. Strange funeral, surprising amount of chest thumping and screaming. Lan canonically is extremely stoic. That's a huge part of his character is that he doesn't express emotion. So this scene doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't understand why they didn't make more use of a very show established connection between Aes Sedai and Warder. They could have shown Moraine sobbing and uncontrollable and give the implication that that's how Lan was feeling inside. And all of her character it. that, I mean, but and I, I cannot stress gonna, this enough, we have zero it. reason to care about. Episode six, The Flame of Tar Valon. We open with a flashback. Some mystery girl uses mojo to unravel a knot in a fishnet. Their house gets burned down because of bigotry against mojo, I think. The dad preps a boat to send the girl to headquarters. She wants him to come with her, but he's like, sorry, no can do. Best of luck, kiddo. See you never. Mystery girl seems pretty chill about the whole thing. Back to the present day. The Technicolor Dream Team has assembled because Chief Girl Boss is in the super CGI house. Fake 2.0 is brought before her so that he can murmur about how much smack everybody talks about her. He's like, lady, everybody hates you. Just FYI. Chief girl boss is like, oh, you want death? Sucks. Fake 2.0 is very unhappy about this. Chief girl boss wants to know why fake 2.0 got demojoed before he was brought before her. To which Red says both, we had no choice, he was the most powerful man I've ever seen, and also, he's lucky to be alive. I feel like those two statements contradict each other. Chief Girl Boss is like, eh, I don't care. You did bad. It's your fault. You'll be punished. Red is super not happy, so she decides to bring up Mean Girl. And Chief Girl Boss is like, yes and? Red goes off about not Galadriel being bad at her job and chief girl boss going easy on her because they're both blues who we just learned work as spies i think nah oh by all means do explain i mean 
the blues are all concerned with like justice and causes and into saving the world. That's like really their mission. And yes, technically they do have the largest network, which I guess is kind of like spies, but it's not really. It's different. There's a difference. Totally. So anyway, chief girl boss is like, fine, not Galadriel. Explain. Not Galadriel is like, nope. Chief girl boss is like, uh -huh. Excuse me? Did I stutter? Oh, hell no. You better beg me for forgiveness. We cut then to not Galadriel having some teary-eyed tea, but then Simp shows up to take her to see Gambler. Not Galadriel performs a quick exorcism, and just like that, Gambler is okie dokie. I don't know what to think about this scene because like maybe it's just a fake out, but Matt doesn't get healed to the end of book two and it is a huge ordeal. Like Moraine and other Aes Sedai have to keep trying to like sort of heal him until they can get him to the White Tower. And then it is like multiple Aes Sedai trying to heal him. He almost dies getting healed. And then there's a whole like reversal of how- Gambler is okie dokie. Mean Girl comes back and is like, what the fuck are you doing here? And not Galadriel is like, um, saving your friend, even though you were too stupid and too stubborn to tell me about this? If wisdom is the title you claim, I suggest you start using some. Oh, snap. We then cut to not Galadriel having a steam bath with another blue who's soups mad that a green and a blue defended a red. Guess girl bosses don't like bipartisanship. Then we cut to not Galadriel being taken to see wifeless and Cliff, who have arrived. For some reason, not Galadriel tells her that she has people watching the Hollister and Gambler instead of just telling them that that they're here and they're fine. Does this really not count as a lie? Okay, this one isn't as great, I would say, but technically she did have people watching for their arrival. So it's not technically a lie, even though it's at like a different point in time. So like she could get away with it. Why would you have people watching for their arrival when they have very much arrived and you know it. Aes Sedai are allowed to lie by omission. Anyway, Cliff tells Nakaladriel about Wifeless wolfing out and she's like, oh shit, tell no one. And Cliff is like, oh man, why? Nakaladriel says something vaguely ominous. All of this is very vague right now in an attempt to keep the mystery of who the Dragon Reborn is alive, which is solved in the book by just not making it a mystery at all. Not a mystery? Oopsie, spoiler, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, cut to not Galadriel getting confronted by Simp, who's mad she turned off her geolocation on their bond. Why did she turn off geolocation? Booty call, ayo! Not a booty call that uses traveling, just a lost weave in the third age. A what, lost in a when? It's just such a throwaway scene when traveling is like such a big deal in the book and rediscovering that. Okay, but yeah, well, just a moving on from that. Not Galadriel and Chief Girl Boss, it turns out, are in cahoots. Not Galadriel wants to tell everybody what they're trying to do. What that is, still unclear. But Chief Girl Boss is like, um, if everyone found out what we're trying to do, then we would be in mega trouble. And Not Galadriel's like, duh, I know that. But so then why did she suggest telling everybody? Apparently uber baddie is at the eye of the world, so Chief Girl Boss wants to send all possible 2.0s to get him, but not Galadriel is like, no, we can't, because the ones that go that aren't the real one are gonna die. But like, if the uber baddie isn't defeated, then everybody's gonna die? So like, okay, harsh, but like four lives versus everyone, like, you know? You're right. Awesome. Well, in the context of the show. Dang it. Because it's not true in the book. The four won't die if they go there, so. Cut to Red, who has decided to once again tell not Galadriel about all the cards she holds. She knows all about the kids from the village, and instead of keeping that useful information to herself and biding her time to see when it might come in useful, she just brags about knowing it to not Galadriel. But then not Galadriel's like, well, I know about your boyfriend, so zip it. Then not Galadriel and Simp meet with Hagrid for a hot second. Then Cliff and Mean Girl get reunited, aww. Chief Girl Boss wants a meeting with both Mean Girl and Cliff. Mean Girl, pleasant as always, is like, well, she can wait, but they're forced to go to the meeting. <laughs> Chief Girl Boss is very complimentary to Mean Girl, so naturally Mean Girl is like, screw you. Chief Girl Boss <laughs> tells them that they have a grand destiny. Mean Girl is like, screw that. Chief Girl Boss finally loses patience and is like, well, 
What you want doesn't actually matter. How about that? Then we cut to not Galadriel staring dramatically at the view below. She and Simp talk cryptically about some plan they're ready for. Not Galadriel goes before Chief Grobas to get her punishment, the exile that she requested. She's got a mojo swear to stick to her exile. And this takes quite a while and is very dramatic. One might say melodramatic. Ugh, this is so melodramatic. You would not use the oath rod for something like this. And Moraine- The not Galadriel dramatically Arwen style rides through the forest to the prearranged rendezvous with the village peeps. Cryptic plan is a go. But first, exposition time. They're gonna travel the ways to get to the eye where the dark one okay, is. Okay, so the ways are- I don't know why I'm surprised. This place that were created by the male Aes Sedai to help the Ogier travel safely from steading to steading. In your language, steadings are kind of like mini shires. They're like safe place for the Ogier. But so the yeah, thing is totally. with the ways. Anyway, so they're traveling through- The ways. Yeah, that. And the stakes are the end of the world. So no pressure, guys. And everybody decides to go on the scary dark magic path, except Gambler, who's like, nah, I'm good. The only sane choice, really. Episode seven, the dark along the ways. We open with another flashback. Snow, battle, woman running. Woman is in labor? Cue dramatic childbirth. Wait, what? She's fighting? Very courteous of the dudes to attack her one at a time. Also courteous of her contractions to wait for pauses in the fighting to hit. Oh shit, dude stabbed her in the belly. R.I.P. baby. And then we crawl over to a rock so we can adopt the least effective pose for childbirth. Well, she and the baby are definitely goners. Not sure why we had to see that. Irrelevant. How? dare you call this scene irrelevant. It's my favorite scene in the whole show. It's the one that's probably the most lore accurate and the most exciting. I mean, yes, it would have been really nice if her veil was up the whole time because that's kind of not lore accurate, but this scene is so great. How dare you? Scene. Back to the present. Picking up where we left off in the previous episode, everyone is screaming that Gambler has been left behind. Not Galadriel is pretty chill about it considering that he might be the 2.0 that they need and this whole quest will be for nothing if it turns out that he is but she's like he made his choice look she's way more concerned where everyone is in the books but not like you deserve to know that but she does hollister is uh exhibiting his trademark brilliance or did you make it for him i mean she literally did nothing <laughs> The dude just didn't go through with y'all to the dark, scary path. But by all means, blame someone else. You know the darkness in him. Do you really think he's ready for what lies ahead? Um, again, don't you need him? And if not, why were you gonna make him come anyway? Hollister might be onto something. That is pretty sus. But luckily we brought Exposition Hagrid along. So he begins to tell us about the ooky spooky things in the dark. No opening the gates from the inside. No using mojo in here because the bad things will find you. Question, how are you ever going to get out again? Anyway, Hollister is still on. We can't leave Gambler. He left us. You don't actually believe that, do you? Hollister, hon, I know he was your friend, but like, this isn't a complicated situation. Not a lot of gray here. Your friend ditched you. Sim finally says what we are all thinking. Um, boss, what if Gambler was, you know, the one? Well, that would be bad because he's bad. Okay, but you wanted him along originally. What was your plan if he had come and was the one? I'm starting to think you shouldn't be in charge. Okay, so our heroes make their way through the minds of more. Sorry, wrong story. They carry on through the ways while Hagrid continues to lift their spirits with ominous exposition. Simp corners mean girl. I owe my boss three silvers. You're scowling. I bet on pouting. Okay, if this is supposed to be flirtatious banter, I recommend Simp just stick with like the enigmatic silent type. But if this was an actual bet, I have questions. Three silvers seems like a lot. And what were the terms of the bet? I bet you three silvers that mean girl 
will at some point be pouting. I bet you three silvers Mean Girl will be pouting right after we enter the ways. I bet you three silvers that Gambler will leave the group and that this will make Mean Girl pout. And then Knock Galadriel took the bet and said, nah, my dude, she's gonna be scowling. And if this is the case, Knock Galadriel clearly knows Mean Girl better than Simp does, because betting that Mean Girl is or will be scowling is a bet you can take to the bank. Okay, so now Wifeless demonstrates his super sight. While being blinded by several torches, he's able to see into the pitch darkness ahead, and he immediately warns the group that up ahead he sees a rock. Thank goodness you're here, Wifeless, because otherwise we would have come upon this rock slightly more slowly. Hagrid needs time to read the rock so they know which way to go. So far, it seems like there's only been one path, but I guess the path is forking here. Even though they don't know which way yet, Not Galadriel tells us it's at least a day's journey to the gate they're going to. The gate that they can't open without using Mojo, which they cannot use in the dark, scary place. Well, do you really want me to explain all of this? Or do you just want me to be like, it was better and made more sense in the book and just let everybody move on? For the love of fantasy, let's move on. Hollister wants to know how Wifeless was able to see that rock. I want to know why he thought it was important. Simp murmurs to not Galadriel, do you know what did that to the rock that was ahead of us? There's something following us. Ah yes, as we all know, when someone or something is following you, you are likely to see evidence of that ahead of you. The heroes are sleeping, Simp is on watch, but it is the sleeping cliff that notices a noise just before they are attacked. But oh no, she uses Mojo on it and now they're in worse trouble. Hagrid offers additional exposition regarding the badness on the dark path. This danger that they're all getting ready to fight, Knock Galadriel says, will speak to you. I'm waking in my boots. Our heroes run and within a couple of minutes, the gate that was at least a day's journey is up ahead. But oh no, the bad voice is caught up with them and they're saying bad things. The negging, it's, it's too much for our heroes. They can't take any more bullying. But Mean Girl has had enough. There is a tempest in her. Boom goes her mojo. And the bad voices run away, giving Nakaladriel time to use her mojo to open the gate. Everybody using mojo in the place that you're not supposed to use it. And they've reached Tatooine. Not Galadriel says where they're going is a day's walk beyond the city, but we've seen what her day's walk is, so I'd say they're probably like a 15 minute stroll. But everyone is still super triggered by what they heard from the negging bully voices. It's Mashing Shin or, or the Black Wind. And in the book, it is really scary because it like sucks out and destroys your soul and can absolutely kill you. Yes, dear, I'm sure it does. As they approach Meereen, Hagrid says to Simp, how long has it been since you last walked through this gate? Very important conversation vital to our understanding. Then the hosts say to Simp, welcome home. So confirmed, he's been here before. That was really on tenterhooks there. Host says to not Galadriel, why are you here? We're here. Let me guess. Oh, sorry. Thought it was my turn to talk. My bad. I'll let you finish. I bet my sister snitched. Well, we got this. So bye bye Oh, I dig off. You do you. Oh, my bad. In that case, feel free to hang. You couldn't quite cut it as a girl boss, but are you still DTF? Maybe. Tell the girl bosses, they gotta find this dude I lost. And our heroes are walking through town, no hurry, not like there's some place that they need to get to. Cliff says to Hollister, who is looking mopey, are you still sad because of the wind bullies? No, maybe, whatever. Then Wifeless recognizes a peddler, which is a kind of person that is known to travel from place to place and is stunned. Mean Girl assures him it couldn't be him. He was in our town on the night when many, but not all people died. Therefore, we know for certain that he is 100% dead. Cut to them all at a tavern. Wifeless preaches pacifism to Hollister. Hollister is horrified. He's like, no barbecue, like at all? That's a real quick no. Mean Girl notices that Nakaladriel has gone to the bar at a tavern and finds this suspicious. But of course she's right to be suspicious because not Galadriel is asking Barkeep to give her a vibe check on our heroes. 
We learned that Wifeless gets yellow eyes sometimes, something we did not know. We learned that Hollister may or may not have or hold a baby at some point, and that the girls, both of them, um, there's like lights and gold stuff, so cool. The vibe check on Not Galadriel is that her girlfriend is her doom. Yikes. Meantime, back at the castle, uh, Not Galadriel tells them that they leave in the morning. They want to know about Barkeep. Not Galadriel tells them that she and Barkeep, they go way back. But Mean Girl says, nah, you're lying. Nat Galadriel reminds them that she can't freaking lie, but boy oh boy she wishes she could. Not a sus thing at all to say. Not Galadriel decides that this is the time to tell them that where they're going, whoever isn't the actual 2.0 is going to 100% die. Tomorrow I will take all of you to the eye knowing that three of you will not return. Are you asking us to feel bad for you? Cause like, you know no one's gonna agree to go now, right? Wifeless points out that it might be none of them. Cause you know, it could be Gambler who they left behind. Genuinely excellent point, well done. Not Galadriel gaslights them. It's easy to use doubt as a crutch. Lady, if you want them all to risk their necks, when all of them might die for literally nothing. Probably don't tell them. And if you do tell them about it, don't be surprised when they don't take it well. Doubt is the first step towards surrender to the dark. Okay, Yoda. I didn't choose this path any more than you did, but I will follow it because I must. Uh, you're not facing near certain death though. Mean Girl's like, uh, yeah, we need to talk this over. Not glad you're like, cool. Let me know what y'all decide. Still gotta leave in the morning. Not a problem at all that the one that is 2.0 just might not be one of them. Cliff is all in. She tells Mean Girl, you just hate this suicide mission because you hate not Galadriel. Get over it already. Hollister very helpfully adds, I can't lose anyone in this room. Wifeless is like, guys, hello, it might be none of us. Like what if it's Gambler? who isn't here? Cliff is like, as if. Hollister does not take this well. You said what? That's my boy you're talking about. Um, he ditched us, so. You'd know all about ditching. Bruh. Mean girl comes in. Boys, 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 stop it. I'm so sick of you guys fighting over her, even though you've literally never fought over her before and aren't actually fighting over her now. I'm just so sick of it. Huh. Now that you've said that, I fully believe it's true. How did I never see this thing that isn't happening until you made it up? I've been so blind. I loved my wife. Oh, whoops. Did I just start some drama? My bad. The show's bad. It's, it's the show's bad. This love triangle does not exist in the books, and I just will absolutely not stand for the CW shiz. Cut to Simp and Not Galadriel. They'll come. Willingly? You've given them the option not to. So yeah, I'd say that's guarantee they'll come. You good? Yeah. Just thinking about when you and me got together, about how you're obsessed with me and how that's not healthy. For you, I had nothing to live for and nothing to die for. Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, go say bye forever to your family. Then we cut to Simp wandering the town at night, hugging some people we've never seen before. Mean Girl is creepily stalking him. Simp senses he's being stalked and invites her in. Some grandpa is like, nice dude, she's hot. Ew. We have this an awkward family meal. Mean Girl tries to eat, but Gramps grabs her hand. Thank you for bringing him home and keeping him safe. And that is quite a leap. Like, I don't know what gave you the idea that she is in any way responsible for him or his safety, but okay. Simp is um shown to be good with a child. Mean girl swoons. Several minutes of staring. Several minutes of silent undressing. More creepy invasion of Simp's privacy by mean girl. More staring. And finally, kiss. Then we cut to Hollister doing some late night archery. He kinda sucks. Cliff joins him. Um, I was ghosting you, but then you didn't like notice so now i'm telling you that i was ghosting you yeah i figured you'd give up eventually <laughs> okay okay my bad i'm sorry i know there's nothing between you and wifeless uh duh that's like so not the point i can't believe you think i don't care about that guy that definitely ditched us 
I, I, I was just in my feelings about it. I still am, TBH. I can't lose you. Aw, uh, don't be sad. Not Galadriel is wrong. None of us is going to die on this suicide mission. Okay, but also, forget the mission. You need to go to headquarters and study to be a girl boss. I can't go without you. Aw, don't you know I already simp for you? Let's make it official. And they finally kiss. Then we cut to simp and mean girl. Mean girl is getting dressed already. You're leaving? That old dude, he called you something weird. Oh, it just means future king. No big deal. Who is he though? Oh, my whole family was massacred. He saved me. Oh, okay. It's all making sense. I, I totally get the simp thing now. Well, fine. I guess I get the chasing after kids now. So there. Then we cut to Hollister and Cliff again with a flashback to the night of the village attack. Hollister actually got some super important exposition from his dad that he has kept from us this whole time. Rude. Oh, look who can shoot straight now. The wind bullies told him he's 2.0, which makes it true. Time to talk to Barky. What a coinky dink. She met Hollister's dad once. Turns out Battlebirth Warrior Princess was Hollister's mom? Who saw that coming? We cut to the next morning. Cliff finds Mean Girl's room empty, bed not slept in. Ooh. Mean Girl says to Cliff, so about that drama I started yesterday for no reason. My bad. Drama enters the chat. Mean Girl is like, so fam, are we doing this suicide thing or nah? Heck yeah. Yup. Ah, uh, for fuck's sake. Then they notice Hollister is missing. Cut to Hollister knocking. Cut to Mean Girl opens the door to Sim? Cut to, not Galadriel opens a different door to Hollister. Wow, what a misdirect. Very clap, much wow. It's me. At the door? Yeah, pal. She can see that. Oh, you mean you're 2.0. We cut back to Simp telling me and girl that not Galadriel has turned off her geolocation again. Ruh row. Then we cut to not Galadriel and Hollister, and they are about to enter the Forbidden Forest. Dun, dun, dun. Someone's gotten awful quiet. Yes, well, I think I've made my point clear. Episode eight, the eye of the world. We open with a mega flashback 3000 years ago. Some fancy people talking gibberish. Girl bosses won't do what the boss man wants. Baby cries. It's too risky. That's why I need your help. Lol, no, but we'll clean up your mess when you fail. The fate of the world decided in a nursery. Okay, drama queen, whatever, do you. And now I will use your full name and title so the audience understands what the point of this flashback was. Ah, uh, yes, right. And you, full name and title, as I always address you. Baby cries some more. Then we cut to a view of the city. Wakanda! What? What a twist. Then back to the present. <laughs> Did you hear that? Huh. Weird. Anyway, back to the Forbidden Forest. Not Galadriel and Hollister, touching everything, breathing in shroom spores from corpses. Not Galadriel's like, don't touch anything here. A thing that is definitely possible. Then we cut to Cliff, who is crying. Wifeless is like, listen, ain't shit we can do. But I love him. Same. We good? Oh, most definitely. Back to not Galadriel and Hollister touching everything. So, do you want to talk about your feelings? Lol, well, no. Stuff your face with this and quit bothering me. Back to Simp and Mean Girl. Simp is brooding. Is geolocation back online yet? No. So, I have a confession. You know how you thought I was following you originally? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, I was following your boss. She has a tell. Like in poker? I can show you. For real? You are awesome. But you sure you want to let me go alone? You know what? You know what? I actually can't let this one go. <laughs> I can't let this one go. You know what? The scene makes absolutely no sense. Lan has been Moraine's warder for 20 years. It's literally a warder's job to, to find things, to protect someone, to look after someone. And you're telling me Nynaeve, who has known Moraine for like a month, knows a tell that a professional ranger doesn't know? <laughs> no, no, it doesn't make any sense. I don't understand. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 
about us. I'm not really looking for a long-term thing right now. Oh, so that's how it is. Well, whoever you do end up with, I hate him because I ain't him. But also, you're prettier when you smile. So if he makes you smile, then I guess he's all right by me. Back to Hollister, who wakes up and not Galadriel instantly dies. Patrick Bateman's corpse is like, didn't expect you, bro. Hollister fires an arrow into his fire eye and Patrick Bateman pushes the arrow in further. His face gets swallowed by his eye. Oh cool, he's just some guy now. Looks ready to sell you some life insurance. He does like a romantic cheek stroke and Hollister finally realizes that he is dreaming. Insurance guy's like, so what's the plan, my dude? You here to take me down, lol, you and what army? Hollister brandishes his sword, very heroic, we stand. A sword with a boot on it. Dang, where'd you get it? From my daddy? No, even though I acted surprised at seeing the bird on your blade, I actually know your entire backstory and can reveal to you that your real dad is dead and that guy you grew up with just raised you. Hollister is shooketh. Okay, real talk. Let me give you the TLDR on being 2.0. How to wake myself from this dream. I know, and he stabs himself in the gut. Wouldn't be my first choice, but that works, I guess. What did the uber baddie say in your dream? I don't believe him. What did he say? I thought you had a plan. Bruh, what? How does her wanting to know what the bad guy said mean that she doesn't have a plan? Well, I brought this thingy. It's a girl boss heirloom. It's basically a cheat code. Okay, but what do I do though? Your job? And then he smiles super creepily. Okay, I'm gonna keep walking now. And we cut back to Mean Girl and Cliff. Listening to the wind, they hear bad vibes. Then back to Hollister and Nocaladriel, branches falling on him. Hollister is like, ma'am, I demand exposition. Oh, okay, fine. Hollister touches some more forest in order to sit down during her story. So there was this girl boss who abused me when I was a kid. Dang, that got real dark real quick. So there you have it. Nothing to worry about. Yes, I feel extremely reassured by this story. Thank you. Then back to the heroes who are visiting Barkeep. They want to know what she told Hollister. But Barkeep is getting real bad vibes from everybody. And then alarm horn. Uh-oh. Back to Hollister and Nocaladriel trudging along. They spot the army of beasties that's headed for our heroes. Back to Marine, where they've only just realized that there's an army headed their way. Good thing there's a teeny tiny wall blocking their path. Um, that's not going to stop them. I'ma head over there. Y'all got this? And everyone leaves. I guess they got this. Bruh, I'm telling you, that wall is not gonna do shit. And we cut back to Hollister and Nocaladriel still trudging along. They come upon a big hole. Hang on a second. You said whoever went along and wasn't 2.0 would die. Does that mean you too? Okay, no worries. I'll take it from here. I got this but not Galadriel ignores him and walks onward. So brave. Then we cut to Simp, who's trudging through the Forbidden Forest, coming after not Galadriel. Then we cut to the host dude, who's getting prepared for war. Hey, so you know that armor that kept our dad alive, and his dad alive, and his dad's dad alive, and his dad's dad's dad? I don't care, I'm wearing mine, okay? Fine, whatever. But don't go to that teeny wall. I'm telling you, it's useless. I know the wall is useless. I have a plan. I'm bringing my dudes to the useless wall so we can all die defending it. And then you women can save the city without us. Our family has always used this foolproof plan. Okay, well our family has never dealt with today's situation. Oh, don't worry, I know. We're all definitely going to die today. These are the end times, nothing we can do. But we'll try to die slow. Give our peeps some time to get out of here and warn the rest of the world about the end times. Okay, well, you can give up if you want, but I'm not gonna. Add a girl. Then back to Hollister and Nocaladriel in the dark hole. Can I please have some more exposition? Sorry, no can do, I know nothing. 
Conveniently, Hollister starts hallucinating exposition instead. The scene changes to a pleasant looking cottage. This is definitely real. There is not a chance this is fake. Cliff is having a picnic with a kid outside. Hollister holds the kid. Then the scene changes to not Galadriel trying to wake up Hollister. <gasps> That was fake? Uber Baddy uses his mojo on Not Galadriel, then verbally explains what he has done to her in case the feeling of it isn't enough of a clue for her to figure out what he's done to her. Oh, that was for us. Okay, gotcha. Back to the host ladies prepping for war. We need all the girl bosses, any mojo user you can find. <laughs> you definitely heard that, right? So weird. Cut to some randos attacking the floor under the throne of the host city. Cut to Hagrid telling me and girl and Cliff that the city needs mojo users. Cut to the useless wall with all the dudes firing on the CGI BC army. Cut to the girl bosses we've gathered standing between the city and the useless wall. Cut to wifeless being frustrated with pacifism. Hagrid assures him there are ways other than violence. What can we do? We can ask what we can do. Okay, he literally just did that. How is that an answer? Cut to Hollister in Dreamland, finally starting to get a little suspicious. Hey, this seems too good to be true. Wasn't I on a mission to fight the Uber baddie? Didn't she dump me? I've got it. Even though this whole hallucination is drawing on stuff from my mind, I'll ask her something that only she and I know to test if she is real. That'll definitely work. She knew the answer. Dang, this must be real. Not the sharpest knife in the drawer, this ultimate savior. Then everything freezes. Oh snap, it's fake after all. Insurance man is back with a fresh pitch. Hey man, if this isn't real yet, but it could be, eh, eh? And we cut back to IRL, where insurance man is villain monologuing. Not Galadriel brings a knife to Hollister's throat. Aw, oh, snap, she's not messing around. Not Galadriel then starts hero monologuing. Only fair to tell people what you're planning to do so that they can better prepare to thwart you. Then back to the randos breaking the throne room floor. Gotta keep tabs on that. Hagrid and Wifeless discover them and decide to help. Yeah, nothing about what they're doing seems suspicious at all. Then back to the dudes at the useless wall, where they are doing a solid job of committing to certain death. The beastie appears at the window, pulls a spear arm back to throw it. Host dude just stands there, doesn't move, doesn't try to block it, just takes it. Then back to Hollister in Dreamland, very confused. Insurance guy randomly does violence to fake Cliff. Hollister loses it. Insurance guy immediately fixes it. And Hollister's like, okay, I'm in. How do we make this happen. Then back to IRL where insurance guy is pacing sinisterly. Then cut to some people at some door somewhere. Oh hey, isn't that the, that traveling salesman dude? It's definitely, de oh dear, they just killed everyone. This does not seem good. Then we cut back to the throne room where Wifeless is finally questioning why they are tearing up the floor. And some random guy's like, it's a super special magic horn thing that no one has ever mentioned or talked about that we keep under the floor for some reason. It's for 2.0 to use at the end times. You really could have mentioned this sooner. Then back to the useless wall where, surprise, the beasties have broken through. Then back to the grill bosses standing in no man's land between the wall and the city. Ah, shit. Okay, gals, it's mojo time. Then back to the throne room where they found the magic magic thingy, but salesman dude is here? Then back to Hollister and Dreamland learning to be a Sith. Yes, good. Let the hate flow through you. Then back to IRL where insurance man is like, yes, and not Galadriel is like getting nervous. Then back to Mojo is charging up. Then back to the throne room screaming, then back to Hollister in Dreamland, then back to Mojo charging up, charging up, Beastie's getting closer, Mojo boom. Girl bosses are not looking too good though. <laughs> Bookboard, is that you? Would explaining something make you feel better? Um, okay, well, anyway, back to 
Hollister in Dreamland, sensing a disturbance in the mojo, realizes that fake Cliff wouldn't be real Cliff, so he's not down for this plan after all. Mojo boom! Then back to wifeless doing pacifism, leaves the room for one second, and comes back to find everybody dead. And salesman dude is for sure as he is bad news. Then back to the Mojo Squad, still mojoing. Wasn't this battle supposed to end when 2.0 defeated Uber Batty? Why are they still going? The ladies are all frying. R.I.P. Mean Girl. Then back to the throne room, salesman is villain monologuing about coming to their wee town to see our heroes because they're super special. See, he wants to bring balance to the force. Uh, I mean, to, to the mojo. Some of them need to turn to the dark side of the mojo. Then we randomly cut to Gambler being super emo somewhere. Then back to Hollister, not Galadriel, in the hole. So peeps like me, we go cray and kill everybody, right? Yep. Okay. Just tell my friends I'm dead. But bye. Then back to the throne room where salesman is still monologuing and wifeless is reconsidering pacifism, but he's got to think about it some more. Then back to not Galadriel still in the hole. Simp finally caught up. Thanks man, way to be completely useless for this whole showdown. Simp wants geolocation turned back on stat, but no can do. Got no mojo now. Then back to dead mojo squad. But then Cliff uses the power of love to bring me and girl back from the dead. Aww. Book porn? <laughs> um, anyway. Back to Halbrand, headed for more, I, I mean, sorry. Hollister headed for who knows. Then back to not Galadriel and Simp shooketh by the lump of quartz. Not Galadriel says something ominous and we fade to black. Then we cut to the far western shore. There's a nice peaceful beach, some kid playing in the sand. A huge armada materializes. The sea is always, sorry, wrong story. Mojo users send a massive ocean wave for the little girl on the beach. Dang, what did that poor kid do? Guess we'll have to stay tuned for season two to find out.